welcome Mr. Arora to this uh, webinar. Thank Thanks you. for your time. Yes. Uh, my first question to you is, uh, um, as we know, we are all dealing with uh, tough times and uh, has serving customers uh, taken on a new meaning altogether for brands? Uh, how do you see, you know, connecting with customers in these times? Uh, good afternoon and uh, thank you very much for having me here. Uh, I hope everyone who is joining here is uh, safe and healthy and uh, all your near ones uh, and dear ones are uh, uh, in good health and in safe space. Uh, most of you working from homes. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here. Uh, coming on to your question, uh, Rahel, uh, I think uh, all brands try to meet the consumer needs, uh, you know, uh, to the best of their ability. Uh, however, it's time like these that a lot of these brands, a lot of these uh, beliefs get uh, tested. And, uh, you know, the situation is such that you cannot, uh, you know, the fundamentals of the situation have changed. Uh, the relevance of some of the brands have uh, uh, been questioned and it's, while it is very temporary in nature, very, uh, you know, uh, current situation, but, uh, you know, uh, I, I would say that, uh, you know, each brand is trying to the best of its ability to address the consumer needs. A lot of brands have found, uh, you know, uh, trying to give meaning, uh, which is in relevance of today's requirement. For example, you know, the hygiene uh, brands obviously are finding that, uh, you know, they are more relevant for today's needs. Consumers, consumer are seeking them out more. There are other brands which uh, were offering nutrition and were close to immunity have been able to reach out. So obviously, uh, you know, this is a situation which is, uh, you know, brands, each brand is finding how to, you know, be more relevant in the current uh, state that it is in. I want to just announce that we're also live on FB and uh, we will be taking live questions on Zoom and Facebook. So you can post your questions there and uh, keep on tweeting using hashtag e for webinar. Uh, my next question is about, you know, brands are not only um, trying to service uh, unprecedented demand, you know, in some categories maybe in yours. You know, there are, there's an unprecedented demand and while others are just trying to keep the lights on, they're struggling in these times. So tell me, uh, in the last few weeks, uh, what has the story of Zydus been in terms of, has it been unprecedented demand on reshuffling, I mean, re-strategizing, what has it been like? So, uh, so uh, last, uh, should I say, one month or so has been uh, extremely extremely busy i think uh, what's really happening is the the speed of change that has happened in the environment uh, in this country is absolutely uh, it got most people unprepared uh, it got uh, all the brands completely un uh, uh, not very ready to what what we were going to face a uh, lot of uh, you know estimations were done what's going to happen and how we we'll, uh, react to it so so i i think it's a situation where you cannot be prepared for what was going to come our way and what's going to come our way for next uh, uh, probably six to eight weeks. Uh, I've seen and, and fortunately for us, we have a wide portfolio where we have brands that are finding a lot of favor with the consumer because they are uh, high level of relevance and there are uh, products and brands uh, which have taken a little bit of backseat if I were to say. So what's really happening is there are brands like... Uh, we had, uh, you know, we uh, we had in our uh, consumer work uh, plan that in 2021 we will launch a sanitizer and a Nicel brand. In fact, we had series of innovations uh, planned around Nicel uh, last year when we got the brand and we had planned a series of innovation and team was working on it. We done some consumer work and we planned it out in 2021 and we decided to, you know, fast forward it based on what we saw as a demand. Uh, coming up for sanitizer and we said we must participate at this stage rather than wait for another year to you know get in so so we we've had a mixed pack so brands like this where we actually lost in 12 days flat from we taking a decision we had no nothing ready on the table except for the decision and actually producing in the plant uh, 12 days and it's a crazy amount of work that the team worked while sitting at home or whatever they were they were able to do uh, all on i mean the technology has proved you can do so much uh, today. Uh, so, so we've had uh, a mixed pack. So we've had a, 
a very uh, fast movement on some of the products which are very relevant. If I look at say sugar free, we look at Glucon D or a, a Complan or a sanitizer, they're very relevant for the consumers. Uh, it took us some time for a week, uh, week 10 days before, you know, we were back to normal business and we've been able to move some of these things, uh, these brands. Uh, however, there are, uh, you know, certain personal care brands which have uh, taken a backseat and rightly so because uh, right now their relevance, their demand is much lower. So, so we've had a mixed bag, but at the end of it, what we are looking for is that consumers have a certain requirement, certain need right now. Can I fulfill in a, in a positive way uh, as quickly as possible? And I think we've been able to fairly successfully reach out to them. And we've used a lot of, uh, I would say, digital media to, you know, get our way there uh, to reach out to consumers for some of these brands. No, uh, so actually, actually, all the brands are uh, operating without a roadmap right now. You know, uh, they never knew that this is going to happen, and they uh, kind of had to deal with it. But do you think most of the brands um, or the brands in your category have kind of managed to see the road ahead to some extent? Is there some kind of? Uh, it's been a few weeks. Uh, kind of clarity that is visible now for brands to chalk out a future strategy. So I have a fundamental belief uh, that strategies don't change month to month and week to week or a quarter to quarter. Strategies is long term. So so what's really happening is that uh, on a normal ongoing basis, uh, each brand has a certain set of assumption and a strategy. Uh, you work basis those assumption and you uh, plan your executions. I'm going to launch this. I'm going to advertise this. This is the business that will come now. This is last four weeks have shown that all your assumptions can go completely wrong. Uh, that you will have a certain kind of demand that will be there. Uh, there will be a certain kind of media, a certain kind of consumption will, will be there. So those assumptions have gone uh, completely out of the uh, you know discussion. And a new set of environment has emerged. Uh, <laughs> this has uh, forced a lot of brands to, to relook at are we on the right path? Should we be doing the same things as we had planned, or should we relook at what we are doing? And yes, it is an unprecedented time. But to my mind, uh, if you are anchored on the real uh, long-term consumer need, uh, benefits, chances are you will be relevant. If not now, over a period of time, you will be able to you know come back. And therefore, altering your brand strategies is a much larger call that one will have to take. But do I need to change my execution, my short-term plans? Yes, each brand has to relook at it. Now, whether it is some of the high consumption uh, spaces like, uh, you know, biscuits or some other uh, essential food items, their, their, their uh, opportunity is much bigger. They have to react very quickly, whether at the back end or, or at the front end and uh, how do they reach out to the consumers or certain uh, personal care, high value items, which, uh, which are very occasional and requ uh, requirement and, you know, skincare needs, which or uh, should I say cosmetics, which get used occasionally. Now, those occasions are not going to happen. So they obviously have to go back to the drawing board and say, okay, I need to re redraw my plans, uh, re relook at what is the environment I'm dealing with and how long will it last. So obviously, each brand will have to find its own solution. Uh, uh, many of the brands will have to plan now, uh, relook at things week to week, fortnight to fortnight, and probably month to month, and redraw their execution strategies. But having said that, uh, I don't think from a medium term to long term point of view, there is fundamentally anything broken from the brand's point of view, because brands are built around uh, you know, real consumer needs. And I'm talking about good large brands. Obviously, if something is not built around those, uh, those will get shattered. Uh, people, uh, brands which have not uh, you know, understood the consumer trends in the past will get shaken much more. But I'm saying if, if the brand is done enough amount of homework, it's built around the real reasons. I think those will hold on on over a medium and long term. You may have to go back to the drawing board and see what do I do in next uh, few weeks and months uh, to stay relevant, to stay in business uh, so that I have a long term too. Uh, but that's really what this uh, situation is. Uh, over a longer term, I think most brands will find a way to recover back uh, 
of course this is an opportunity for certain brands to uh, also relook at their market shares uh, it will also be a test on the organizations to uh, you know demonstrate what is their agility to respond to the uh, pandemic uh, in fact the environment and there may be a recast of certain kind of uh, pecking order of the brands brands which who respond better and brands who don't respond better to the environment so there, therefore uh, there will be again i am saying that will be back to your how well you execute how well you uh, read the environment and how well you are uh, responding to consumer uh, sensitivity I, i just want to mention that we are uh, also live on fb and you can post your questions on zoom and fb plus uh, you can uh, tweet using hashtag eform tweets uh, sorry eform uh, webinar uh, my next question is that you know some products uh, especially in your category uh, despite whatever we are witnessing um, are some brands feeling safer than other brands because they are in a particular category and second you briefly touched upon Uh, addressing consumer needs for example you are with manufacturing sanitizers now so has it how uh, in terms of product category also how is zydus uh, quickly trying to adjust to the changing times what all do we see in, in that space as well so so uh, yes there are certain categories uh, i think you picked it up very well uh, the fact that sanitizers is a category which the needs are much higher and we are clearly seeing a, a good pull there and Uh, we were very quick to move to that situation and there are other brands i mean uh, fact is that uh, nutrition needs uh, are consistent whether you are at home or you are working or i mean till going to school at home so some of our nutrition brands are uh, back on a consistent path and i don't think uh, there is much to worry or a uh, or a sweetener uh, but there will be clearly uh, there are uh, challenges for uh, skin care and personal care uh, spaces which are under pressure at this point in time because uh, uh, the consumption has taken a beating in those uh, situations so what we are trying to do is and the way we have uh, re uh, uh, reworked the whole uh, plans are that we are obviously supporting brands more aggressively which have more relevance for today uh, it's extreme summer uh, right now so brands like glucon d and uh, nicel will be relevant yes people are going out less so there's going to be a less requirement of those but that's okay i think we'll have to deal with it but the fact is that they are topical in nature they are requirement of today so these brands are showing traction uh, as we would anticipate they would and uh, similarly uh, we're working on uh, i mean we're continuing to support the brands like uh, farmplan sugar free because uh, we see a consistent traction people need uh, sugar sweeteners etc on a daily basis so we believe uh, there will be continued traction from this there was a brief time and i think it's still there uh, a demand and supply uh, uh, there was a divide you know? uh, as far as your products are concerned uh, i mean how are you kind of stocking up on those because the consumers definitely you know need to kind of uh, have these products available as well you know <clears throat> loyal ones so are you looking at kind of any special maybe a distribution um, offering at the moment so that you know the needs are met quickly could you could you just speak uh, i i didn't get it okay so uh, the distribution and uh, you know uh, product distribution was uh, hugely impacted in between earlier so how how are your products kind of placed do we have enough do the consumers have enough uh, access to them are you setting any special centers distribution centers for them because you know lockdown has made uh, some of the products unavailable which they may have used how are you looking at the situation and okay uh, let me explain to you what's really happening and what are we doing about it first of all uh, what's happened is uh, with this lockdown which has lasted almost now four weeks uh, more than four weeks uh, <clears throat> there is uh, there is a uh, a uh, gap in the whole supply chain uh, across the country while government is trying pretty hard and has supported uh, all the companies but there is clearly a breakdown in certain parts of the supply chain it has progressively got better we still find some challenges uh, uh, in the supply chain but we are finding that the demand <coughs> has has been consistent where consumers are seeking out products uh, however we are not able to fulfill the demand i'm saying uh, consumer product companies uh, as a group not able to fulfill and there are uh, outlets which have run out of stocks 
uh, over a period of time as the you know as the time is passing and the government is uh, making uh, uh, efforts to you know help the supply chain happen uh, we've seen a certain kind of pullback of uh, products back into the shelves at least in the top outlets a large number of outlets uh, we've been able to open up our uh, our warehouses uh, a lot of our uh, distribution points have uh, started opening up and that is helping us uh, reach out to consumers much better so so clearly i see a significant improvement in the whole supply chain uh, what is also happening from our side is we've also used this time to go back and go back to the drawing board and see what can i do differently in this environment to ensure that i i am able to meet the demand supply gap that that really exists in the market so we've gone back to uh, to our partners in e-commerce uh, we've uh, helped them you know ensure that uh, we can ramp up our uh, supply to them uh, directly uh, so we have a today a much higher uh, supply to e-commerce than earlier from a direct to from the company uh, similarly uh, Uh, if i look at montrade we have engaged with the montrade as well uh, the fact that um, uh, we've we've uh, uh, worked with them to ensure that uh, our products are uh, uh, better stocked specifically uh, the lead products that have good traction uh, how can we ensure uh, we are better connected we have uh, a constant dialogue with them uh, thirdly which is a much larger access point today is uh, obviously the kirana stores and the chemists what we've done is we've put uh, we've hired specifically additional vehicles dedicated for our supply chain to ensure that we can fulfill this de- demand uh, plus we've done uh, several other routes like telecalling to the kiranas servicing this uh, requirement so so we are trying uh, you know all the parts e-commerce montrade and uh, directly with the kiranas to fulfill that demand we've seen good uh, improvement over the i mean on a sequential basis uh, every 4 to 5 days i see a substantial improvement we are getting closer to a normal situation so uh, as a somebody who represents a very uh, strong brand uh, tell me what have been the key learnings from this lockdown for brands if you have to sum up maybe two or three big learnings from this uh, so uh, i think if i were to look at uh, two or three key learnings i think um, the brands uh, so so first uh, one of the biggest i think uh, proof point of this entire uh, situation has been the digital space uh, fact that uh, brands that have not embraced the technology and uh, digital space brands and companies i would say uh, they are the ones who have been uh, struggling the most uh, this situation will fast forward this whole uh, uh, digital uh, and uh, technology world uh, and and i'm saying not just fact that you embrace the e-commerce but the fact that how do we service our regular kiranas also so clearly one important learning is uh, being moving the needle constantly on the uh, digital uh, path is very necessary any brand which is not doing it clearly will uh, falter uh, i know of an example if i were to share there was a garment manufacturer in uh, uk who was uh, uh making accessible garments and said e-commerce is not suitable for us because we are uh, more accessible kind of products they are the ones who are worst hit actually and and therefore uh, brands for us for example we went on the e-commerce uh, aggressive ride couple of years back we are finding that we are better prepared to respond to this challenge had we not done it i think we would have uh, struggled so clearly one uh, major learning is the the digital space both from a uh, a transaction point of view as well as from a, a consumer communication point of view is extremely important second is uh, in the space of health and wellness and i think that's the topic of today and that's what uh, we stand for i think uh, offering uh, do good products consumer uh, to consumers products that really help consumers get better healthier uh, provide better nutrition uh, those products will become more and more relevant consumers will ask you a lot more questions in the future than they have asked in the past we already seen this trend i mean 10 20 years back consumers will not ask so many questions in last 5 8 years 10 years we've seen consumers ask a lot more questions they look at the back of the panel much more in last few years than they have ever in the past that what is in it inside what what are the 
you know, what is a carb, what is a protein, what is in it for me. Similarly, so therefore, for the nutrition, uh, uh, health and wellness brands, uh, offering right value to consumers will matter a lot. Today, our consumers are talking about immunity. Immunity has become such an important thing. And immunity goes back to what you eat and how well do you, uh, how healthy do you stay. It is so, so clearly back to that, that having uh, real benefits rather than, uh, you know, rather than saying uh, making frivolous claims will be more, more, uh, more and more important. Uh, digital. I think these two things will will be here to stay. Of course, there are many more, but these two things will be here to stay. Third thing I can say, which is more of a behavioral thing uh, from organization brands everywhere, is uh, uh, adaptability. I'm saying uh, we don't have to say where we are, but how agile you are, how adaptable you are to the environment. And environment will change so fast. Uh, we are dealing with a very volatile, uh, ambiguous world. Uh, which is going to get more complex, situations will change. How quickly uh, your brand can adapt, your organization can adapt uh, to the situation will will uh, demonstrate whether you succeed. And the last is that you can't predict the future and say that I've done this and I can sit back. You have to be constantly at it, uh, execute uh, every week, every month, and then look at how did it work and how do I respond. So. So nimble-footed uh, brands, organizations will succeed in the new world. A small announcement that tomorrow we have uh, uh, E4M Tech Munch virtual series and we have another webinar which is how will digital content consumption pan out in the post-COVID scenario. It starts at 4 p.m. till 5 p.m. And we can all, all keep uh, sending questions on FB and Zoom and on Twitter, uh, hashtag E4M webinar. Uh, my next question, and then we'll go to a work audience questions coming in, is that um, you know, in terms of marketing and reaching, you know, keeping the brand, uh, like if you know, that recall alive, you know, we've seen one um, very uh, unique trend. I won't call it unique for a better lack of a better word. Uh, that news channels, you know, news channels especially, have seen a huge spike uh, in viewership. Of course. Uh, how does a brand, how would a brand look at news channels post this phase according to you? Normally, you know, we have they've seen a lot in, in terms of a lot of focus has been on GCs as well. But do you think besides GC news, John would uh, acquire a new, will be seen through a new set of pair of eyes by brands and marketers? I, I think uh, uh, brands have a need to reach out to consumers. Uh, wherever the consumers are, uh, brands will uh, find a way to connect to the consumers. Now, if the consumer is, uh, today the consumption for news channels has shot up, uh, why should the brands not embrace it? Uh, we've seen, uh, actually because uh, people are watching so much of more news, consuming so much of more news, uh, brands will embrace it. The fact is, even the kids' channels have done very well. Uh, because the kids are at home and they're watching so much of new uh, kids channel. So, so, so I think uh, I'm not saying, and I cannot. Uh, it's too early for me to predict that news channel news channel will be the new GEC for the future. But today, uh, the fact is that uh, new content is coming much less. In I mean, it's hard to produce new content because uh, the entire uh, even the industry is in a um, you know in a lockdown and they're not able to generate fresh content. So. GC is going through a con content uh, limitation and news is something people are consuming. Now this will change once the lockdown uh, stops, once things come back to neutral, uh, to uh, you know, life as usual. Uh, and I'm not right now uh, guessing or hazarding a guess how long will that take. But I'm saying when, when it comes back to normal, uh, I, I mean, it will be hard to say that news channel will be the new GC. Things will come back to normal. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't think we can today comment that news will co continue to command that channel share that it does today. But yes, uh, right now, uh, news channels are uh, uh, doing very well. And why should the brands not uh, leverage that? It's the right time for the news channels also to. Tell me, uh, if the lockdown goes on, uh, are brands as in prepared for that? Uh, or they're just now kind of, you know, uh, 
just thinking that it won't be maybe beyond a certain time, you know. Do you think brands are prepared for a longer run also in it need be like wellness brands? So, so uh, let me, uh, so are brands prepared for a lockdown, a longer lockdown? I would say uh, everyone's making their own guess because the <laughs> opinions of various experts are split. How long will this lockdown last? How will the life be, the constrained life will last? The, the fact is that uh, now it is clear that this will be the constrained life uh, that we are talking about, even if lockdown uh, you know uh, eases out and there is uh, a certain kind of openness there will be certain constraints of your ways uh, of working or your you know normal life there will be certain constraints that will stay and uh, people will be a lot more conscious about hygiene and safety till till it is completely eased out till it is completely uh, declared that it is safe and you know covid is out of out of the picture so, uh, so clearly, hygiene and uh, you know hygiene and safety brands will uh, will uh, continue to be extremely relevant in this environment. People will be conscious a lot more about ensuring that their immunity is uh, well uh, built. They are ensuring they are uh, using taking enough care of their hygiene, uh, and therefore it's a good thing uh, for some of these brands uh, that are operating in this space. So. So I, I, I think uh, a lot of brands are not prepared for what's going to come, uh, but uh, we'll also have to see, take it week, uh, week by week, month by month, see how the uh, situation emerges and respond. We cannot kind of uh, start predicting the next six, eight months, nine months uh, very easily. Uh, there is going to be a lot of changes. Uh, I also emphasize some changes at the demand level. The fact is that uh, uh, this uh, entire uh, you know, COVID has also uh, redistributed the entire population. There is a lot of population who's migrated back to their uh, homelands. A uh, lot of working workers who are loaders, a lot of people working on, uh, you know, migrant labor who was there available uh, in the urban cities are not going to be available for some time. Uh, their, you know, their spaces will be under pressure. So it will be, you know, so demand will be very, very different than what we've lived with in the last two, three, four, five years. Uh, it will be very different. The population uh, distribution is changing and uh, we'll have to adjust to that. Many of us may not have been prepared fully for it, but we'll have to learn to deal with it every day. So we have, we have a lot of audience questions coming. I think we'll start with some of them. I have a question from Bridge Rubble. Bridge Rubble, he's saying, uh, he's asking, can you comment on COVID-19 and effect on quality checks, keeping consumers in mind? How are you ensuring quality checks in these times? So, so first of all, I think uh, uh, our commitment on um, you know uh, safety and quality starts with uh, taking care of our employees. So. First of all, at our, all our plants, and we have a video put up on LinkedIn um, also, and we can share it at any place. So our first thing is that our employees have to be safe and healthy. So while we have to produce our products, we want all our employees to be safe and healthy. So uh, we have, uh, you know, taken all the measures at our all our plants that our employees, so they are checked at the gate uh, for all the, you know, all the symptoms, uh, including a, um, you know, temperature check, all, all the symptoms. Uh, if there's anything, we don't let anyone uh, come come in there. If they're coming from an area which we feel uh, there is a possibility, we do not uh, let that happen. There's a safe distancing within the plant. Uh, so we are operating our plants, anything between 30-40% uh, to 50% maximum uh, utilization because we don't need to do more than that right now. And even in our uh, canteens, we are ensuring people don't sit together, but there's sit at uh, sufficient distance. There is ensuring all the quality checks uh, uh, are done, uh, including what is coming in into our plants. So we maintained a fair level of uh, control on the, on the whole uh, environment because for us, uh, employee safety, consumer safety is at the right. high. I have another question from uh, Ham Hemsini. Uh, she's asking, uh, how, how have companies been able to launch sanitizers so quickly? Normally, there are stability tests uh, 
and packaging tests, legal clearances. Uh, how have these been tackled by various FMCG companies? <laughs> so, though she has praised also that nice sanitizer packaging has been done very well. She also mentions this. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, fortunately, we had proven uh, formulations available with us. Uh, we are a wellness company. Uh, we have had interest in sanitizers uh, several years back also, uh, where we test marketed it several years back. So we have we had it in our bank. So it's not something. Uh, and last year we did the consumer validation, which came uh, the results came only in February. So we had the formulations readily available with us. Uh, so we 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 launched two variants. One was a tested. Uh, formulation with our partner who we were working with. One was our own formulation we were ready with. So we've launched both the two formulations and, uh, and therefore we've been able to, you know, we, we had the stability and all those things tested uh, in advance. And the bigger challenge was to get the packaging, uh, which we worked with a couple of packaging suppliers. We have a large, uh, you know, set of suppliers. Uh, we looked at what was readily available and we went back uh, with that. That was uh, something we did off the shelf. Right. Um, so we have another question from Vinay Nair. Uh, he's asking, how do you look at your exports uh, overall, uh, especially from India, especially to South region overall? How are you meeting those demands at the moment? Okay. So, so uh, our business, uh, exports business is going uh, business as usual. We did get affected a uh, little bit because we had certain requirements in certain countries where the ports were uh, shut off. But our exports are fulfilled partially from India manufacturing and partially from uh, um, our uh, uh, partners in outside India. So, uh, so some of the ports were closed, so March we could not export some of these things, but our exports are back to normal. Uh, we should uh, be making some exports as we're making. We are in fact making uh, sugar-free chocolates, which we sell to Middle East as we speak. So, so we are uh, being able to uh, run our uh, exports. Uh, right. to the I, have, I have one small announcement again, which is that on 27th April at 3 p.m. we have another uh, webinar with Mr. Vikram Sakuja, uh, who will talk about news channels and their unparalleled role in current times. So and the next question is from Alpana D and she's asking what would be your advice uh, to B2B uh, startups in the wellness space on services side? What would be your advice on B2B startups for? Uh, startups in wellness space on services side. Yeah. So, so, so this is a situation where uh, actually uh, uh, the servicing service sector uh, if there is any human contact is getting is under pressure and I, I really don't have answers for them because they are, I see a whole lot of them struggling but uh, any services which are uh, uh, which is not uh, delivered in person uh, kind of thing those those services are I mean if you look at um, so the telecom services are doing extremely well so if I look at wellness and if you could be a little bit more specific I could answer that uh, uh, better but i would say uh, wellness is going to be important uh, and therefore it's a good place to be in but uh, if i knew something specific i could uh, you know talk about it this question is from uh, mr anup sharma um, he's asking uh, will this pandemic change the priorities of consumers will health product overtake lifestyle products as we move on uh, i i would say it's hard to uh, uh, you know, predict uh, beyond a point. Uh, fact is that uh, it depends upon how things shape up over the next six to eight months. Uh, we, I mean, I have heard uh, several people talk about, look, the demand is going to come back and everything will be back to normal. I've heard some of the automobile guys saying that, you know, everything will be normal. Give it six to nine months. Public memory is short. Uh, so I, I would say, uh, I don't think anyone has a very specific answer for it. Health and wellness products are here to stay. Uh, people will focus a lot more attention on that. Uh, but lifestyle products may take a beating in short term. But if things come back to normal, if vaccine is found out, if cures are done, I think things come back to normal pretty fast. People find their ways back. Let's look back uh, to 2008-9. Let's look back to uh, what happened in demonetization or GST. A lot of things shrunk. A lot of ways of working changed in short term. 
but uh, i think things tend to do do uh, do tend to come back and therefore i i think uh, lifestyle com- products will come back they will remain important uh, i i am still quite confident that lifestyle will be back uh, the health and wellness angle is something which is here to stay it, they are not necessarily at conflict with each other the next one is from kartik shiv kumar uh, he is asking how will the new normal pan out will it result in more localized manufacturing will india lose the unique india advantage if that happens or will india companies and india become more global indian companies become more global so so uh, so the new normal is very hard to predict but fact is that um, there have been these contrasting uh, things that are happening in the last 5 uh, to 8 years you look at india you look at japan uh, and i am saying these two even america who been saying make in america make in india make in japan nationalism is back so will india be more global or less global i think fact is globalization is not going going away uh, dependence upon or oh, sorry uh, i would say uh, dependence upon one country or two countries for your supply chain will reduce people will look at business continuity people will look at uh, uh, you know not depending on limited ways of doing things yes there may be something that can i do it my on my own rather than depend outsourcing some things but uh, what is core to your business will come back more so so let's let me uh, you know uh, address it from company level and the country level from a company level i will always now look back and show ensure that what will ensure business continuity what can i keep more in control uh, and i'm not saying about zaidus wellness alone but i'm saying any company will look at what is core to me so that my business is less affected by the environment and can i control more things uh, from my india's point of view i think a good example is uh, hcq zaidus group uh, is one of the largest suppliers of hcq when the uh, when the america wanted more uh, volumes of hcq and they reached out to india so i don't think uh, globalization is going away uh india's role in globalization will become more and more important i think india has a clear global ambitions it will play a more important role but uh, each country will also balance its own interest the global village phenomena is uh, you know the original ideas that it's all open and all fair that will get challenged but yes uh, globalization will stay countries will take care of their own interest what will access uh, other uh, countries as well like minded countries and there will be a lot more cooperation since we are on the wellness subject and um, i want to ask you personally that how are you maintaining your wellness what is the routine like work from home for someone who is heading a wellness company and how are you making the most of it so so uh, i think uh, uh, this is the time when uh, i have to start by maintaining my own uh, health and uh, you know Uh, routine before i ask my team to you know stay healthy and uh, so so very importantly i start my day morning at 9 o'clock uh, uh, back to office because i've converted this study into my office and uh, i i have reached out to each and every employee through e town halls uh, uh, reaching out to all of them uh, sharing my views with them we have told them to maintain their health and safety uh, while we are doing our work as usual because we started off on 23rd 24th of march when the lockdown started 24th with the situation practically the entire supply chain was shut everything was shut and progressively we opened up our, our entire supply chain and we had to work across the company and with the industry on uh, helping uh, this through uh, we have spent a uh, fair amount of time uh, working on projects of thinking beyond the you know so you are fire fighting for today but you are also building for the future so we have also fast forwarded a lot of our innovation projects which we want to do uh, once uh, things get at least the lockdown uh, constraints uh, come down and things start coming back to normal so we want to be back at business so for my own self what i'm doing is while my schedule has become extremely hectic morning 9 to 6 morning to 9 to 7 i am also ensuring that i take uh, uh, a decent break i'm also ensuring that i spend a little bit more time with the children in the evening and uh, do some cooking uh, take a little bit of time to uh, meditate or uh, relax for a while because sometimes the pressure becomes high uh, 
that's that's really what is important a little bit of uh, um, fitness and uh, helps uh, we have another 5 minutes to go so we'll take two questions at the most so <clears throat> i have another question from alpana g is a little sensitive question but i just want to uh, share it is does zytus uh, manufacture uh, some products in china or import any ingredients or machines from china has any internal discussion happened or zytus which you want to share uh, so so we have uh, a couple of products uh, which come from china our dependence on china is uh, has been fairly less uh, and we are not dependent only on those uh, for those products only on china so we have uh, fortunately over last few years as a part of business continuity plans uh, european and japanese uh, suppliers available uh, for those products so our dependence on china is way negligible for zytus wellness so so clearly I, I don't think we need to worry too much about it uh, today from zytus wellness and that's why when i talk about china or any other country on a global perspective i can share what as a industry we could look at but uh, uh, from a china specific point of view our dependence is fairly limited uh, only two three four products are where we also for other reasons because we had a business continuity plans in place uh, when there was some pressures on their pollution and some of the plants were likely to get closed down we have ensured that we have backup uh, available and therefore our dependence is very very limited right uh, last question uh, do you see consolidation of businesses in wellness industry as we move on this is from bridge rapel so uh, so from a consumer health and wellness uh, space i don't think uh, uh major changes are uh, emphasized as we speak today uh there is not going to be uh, necessarily uh, any major change uh, i would say in next uh, short to medium term uh, i think most companies are uh, looking good to manage on their own consolidation if at all will happen we'll have to wait and watch i i, I don't see that happening today at least in the consumer health and wellness space that we operate in uh FMCG overall, uh, I think will uh, be able to bear this much better uh, than many other industries, uh, and therefore I expect uh, life to be back to usual. Of course, some companies will get uh, hurt more than others, and some companies will come out as doing better because they have seen an <laughs> expansion of consumption in their spaces, food spaces, atta, noodles, biscuits. So they've been great time for them. So they would have got better, but there are other places where they would have got hurt. So it's a mixed bag. But no, no consolidation as I see today in short to medium term. Thank you and uh, great. Uh, thank you for your time and thank you for being part of uh, the ABP News Presence Pitch Grand Talk Virtual Series. And we have many more coming up. Uh, and, and thank you for everyone who uh, sent in their questions and post discussion. You can maybe write to him or tweet uh, directly to him. Thanks once once again for being part. Thank you, Royal. Thank you for having me here, and it was a pleasure talking to you all of you. And uh, please stay home. Please stay healthy and safe. Thank you.